Is he on the road as um, much as you are? Well, uh, we're actually, it's been, you know, a couple years ago, we sadly, we separated. So I've been journeying this as a single mom, but, um, which is a crazy journey. I never, you know, it's never a club you think you'd sign up for, but, um, the, their dad is always there. So we make sure that our schedules now, when I'm on the road, 40 weeks a year, it's probably one or two nights at a time. I don't leave for seven days. And I really make sure that my priority is my kids. Um, I don't schedule things on their birthdays or milestones or things like that, but, um, it's a lot of flying. Um, I think it's a whole lot tougher on us than it is the kids. So when their dad goes away, you know, the kids are with me, they stay, they're, they're always in one place and they just have, you know, their dad's just very hands-on. So he's always, um, even though he does feed them pizza on a very repetitive <laughs> basis, it never well, fails. That's why they love it so much, right? <laughs> for four days. I, yeah. So um, they have a great dad. So I, it's always worked for us, but it's very unconventional. Well, you know, the thing is, though, and this, I think, is very important when we talk about, you know, living regret-free and, and things like that. You know, it's all what you're accustomed to. If the kids were raised like that, if this is part of who they are and what they did, I think my son... My youngest son said that, I don't know, he was something like 10 years old before he realized that all mothers didn't work because I, I was gone all the time. And my, my husband was very hands-on too, even though, you know, he worked a lot as well, but he was really good with the kids. And um, he just didn't know that all mothers didn't work, even though none of his friend's mothers worked because we lived in a very wealthy area and the mothers didn't work. I mean, the fathers did, but the mothers did, but he didn't put two and two together. So I really think that if you raise them like that and they know that there's a lot of love there, that's the important thing. Not everybody has to be raised, you know, the same way. So and I, my, my seven year old went to the, when she was seven, she took me to the airport and she said, mommy, can't you just be a dentist? You know, <laughs> and I was, it broke my heart, but you know, I get to take them all around the world. My kids have traveled internationally just last weekend. You know, we were on this beach resort in Hilton Head, and I was like, sweetie, um, this is because of mommy's job. Like, I need to remind you of that, you know. So um, they're a little bit, you know, spoiled in some ways that they've gotten to go on cruises and whenever we can travel with them, we do. But um, they've never met a stranger. So trying to keep my kids stranger danger is kind of a joke. My five-year-old on every airplane we've ever, she's like, what's your name? How old are you? What do you like to do? I like to go to restaurants, you know, <laughs> yeah, so I'm you like, know, strange I, danger. I have to tell you, when my son went my first speaking engagement, I think, I don't know, it was 13, 14, 15, something like that. And uh, it just happened that it was a really posh place. And they picked me up in this stretch limo. And, and, right. um, you know, he said, Oh, mom, he said, is this how you travel all the time? Is this, yeah, right. is this what your life is like? And I, cracked up and I said well I said this is nice I said but you haven't seen the Greyhound buses I had to take yeah, when the snow right. was coming down or or the only place to stay in Des Moines was a Ramada Inn yeah. you know so uh yeah it's it's uh interesting so out of all these things that you do and have done um what is your favorite or do you just like the variety of everything um I think I'm definitely not a creature of habit so I do enjoy the variety of it I I love making people laugh and then speaking and making them cry and like the same night, you know, it's just like last week and I, I did a convention for uh, women's physicians and I did comedy and then I came back and I shared um, some personal stories from my life and to get the emails, you know, that you really touched me or I mean, serious, serious topics. Like I had a woman that said she was struggling with suicide before she came and she was a successful doctor. And that my story encouraged her to, you know, go and fight another day like that. You can't put a price on that. That's amazing. And um, wow. I, I'm so blessed. It's so beyond me that um, we get to do what we do. You know, I never, ever take that granted because God will tell me, honey, you could be back selling cell phones on the street corner at any <laughs> moment. I know you're mad. You've been stuck in that airport for nine hours, but I promise God I would be grateful because, um, you know, I know what it's like to work three jobs, none of which you like. So I'm incredibly grateful for, for my job. So where will we see you next? Um, well, I'm going to Detroit on Friday. I'm on a whirlwind tour. Um, I, I've been doing, I'm starting 
to do a lot of YouTube videos. I'm starting a new show on YouTube called hashtag I need attention. But if people want to um, follow my journey, the best thing is they could find me um, on Facebook. I do a lot of live videos. I have no ego. I just like, I have no makeup. My hair's up in a bun and I just burned the muffins this morning. So I did a video to, to show everybody. <laughs> I said, like muffins. my life. <laughs> I'm like, they're called muffinese. They're just kind of gooey and they're all over. But um, I really enjoy engaging with people over social media. It's really fun. So um, I'm, I'm so many places. In the next 30 days, I'm in Detroit, Texas, Illinois, Dallas. Now, is this all comedy? Uh, speaking comedy. Yeah, lots of different, you know. It just depends on the day. Okay. Okay. So um, what is the best? So the, you're saying that the best way to get in touch with you is through Facebook or? Well, if or they go to my website, which is, if you don't mind, Carrie, K-E-R-R-I-P-O-M, CarriePom.com, they can connect with me in any of those ways. Fantastic. Well, you know, it sounds like you're living life to the fullest, Carrie. I mean, it's really... Uh, a great thing that you're able to expose your kids to and the fact that you've got the support, you know, from their dad is, is so important. And, and also, you know, that you really enjoy uh, the variety. I mean, this is the whole thing. I remember, you know, coming from musical theater when they, when they said, Oh, you can, you know, you can only be a dancer or you can only be a singer or you can only be an actor. Well, I always said, I would say, well, no, Liza Minnelli does everything, you know, and yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't have to do just one thing. And yet I am absolutely amazed sometimes when I hear somebody, um, uh, I remember, you know, Sean Hayes from Will and Grace. And then I went to see him on Broadway and I said, oh my God, he's got a voice. I mean, who knew? I mean, there's so many things that a uh, talented person has that they don't get to express if they're kind of categorized in one role. So the fact that you're doing comedy and corporate speaking and acting and i mean it's fantastic that's great so I don't you um, just want to burst out in a song once in a while from your musical theater background i haven't figured out <laughs> how to put that in my act yet but i still have some tap shoes that are waiting to get used so don't put it past me you know it's so funny i still have my tap shoes i just love i remember i got the best taps there were and oh, I loved him so much. I mean, the, the shoes are all crinkly now, but I just love those tap shoes. And um, I just, uh, uh, it's just fantastic. I, I went through, as a matter of fact, I'm cleaning out boxes from my storage unit. And I came across, um, they had a 35th uh, musical theater anniversary. And they have pictures from the musicals from all the years. And oh, I went fun. back to my years and in the pajama game and guys and dolls. Oh, fun. I love it. <laughs> I said, oh, there I am. Look, look at me. And I love uh, it. yeah, it's fun. It's fun. So, okay. So we're going to tell people to find you on Facebook. And are you Carrie Palm on Facebook as well? Uh, you look up K-E-R-R-I-P-O-M. I kind of have a long name. So the easiest way to do that is to just kind of like go to my website because there's a Facebook button on there. So if they go to carriepom.com, K-E-R-R-I-P-O-M.com, um, all the all the ways to connect with me are on there. Fantastic. Or well, the last have... yeah. <laughs> so so our, um, we have about a minute and a half left. Is there something you would like to tell our audience that we haven't talked about? Um. Well, the fact that there's smoke coming from my kitchen is one thing I should probably tell the audience that I'm so committed to this interview that my kitchen could be on fire. Um, <laughs> but no, I just, I really just want to empower that one person that's listening going, you know, that's great for them. They, they have all this support. You know, it's not as easy as it all. It's not as lovely as it all looks on Facebook. It's not as easy and carefree. But you know, if you've got something inside of you, you owe it to yourself to try. You know, no more excuses. You can do it. I, there's got to be a way where, you know, that old saying goes, there's a will, there's a way. So I hope that your show and my story today has inspired at least that one person to go, you know what, if she can do it, I can. Well, that's fabulous. That's great. Yeah. Got to put that toe in the water. There's no question. Well, right. my, <laughs> my guest has been Carrie Pomeroli and on online, she's known as Carrie Pom, K-E-R-R-I-P-O-M.com. And you can find her there on Facebook as well. Thanks so bit much for being with us, Carrie. Yeah. Great Thanks interview. Great. Thanks and so much. Go, go tend to your muffins. <laughs> <laughs>